Okay. So I was very excited because after our last episode, I, I went out and I bought another bottle of our, our Dom DeCant Werner Riesling because one, I really liked it. Two, my wife really liked it. And three, they were kind of awesome. And, and they actually reached out to us. They listened to our episode. What? They're like, yeah, it's like this just this estate in Germany that, you know, like there's thousands of these these guys across the world creating different wines. And, and these guys listened to our, our episode, reached out. They really liked it. They really enjoyed it. They told us, they said they really appreciate that we talked about that Riesling can be dry because so many people think it's only sweet. And the reason I know they actually listened to the episode is the person that reached out to me was like, hey, I want to answer some of your questions about the twist off cap and why we use it. Wow. Uh, that is yeah. awesome. That's incredible. Right. That is so cool. Yeah. And so they reached out and they said, look, the twist off cap is more convenient from a sense of traveling with the wine. They're like, also, you know, with the Riesling, you might not drink a full bottle when you open it. So a twist off caps, obviously easier to, you know, close it up and put it back in the fridge. And they actually talked about like the maturation of wine and they feel strongly that, you know, a, a twist off cap, a metal cap could do just as good of a job as a cork uh with their wines so it was very cool they they felt very strongly about it they reached out and lastly i'll say they had never heard of the tennis ball smell uh. <laughs> they had never heard of it the guy wow. the guy was like i found that very interesting i had never heard of the tennis balls and so like i ordered tennis balls and i went out <laughs> and i bought this wine <laughs> because i need to know all right, so I like went out. I bought an entire bottle of wine. Do it, doing it live, live experiment. Yeah. I was just gonna ask. Wait a minute. So you have this. not, you have not. No, because I didn't and, want uh, to mess balls. with any of the variables here. You told me a newly bopped. So I ordered this online. Yeah. It came yesterday. I I have left it here. It has one hundred percent. I'm so excited. Me too. God, <laughs> couldn't imagine something more exciting. There's a little. There's a a tab, Aaron. Yeah. Yes. God. Ooh. There we go. Uh-huh. It hit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, okay, good. Welcome to Stop Wasting Your Wine, a wine review podcast where we waste our wine so you don't have to. On today's episode, we review... A white wine from France. Thanks so much for joining us. So happy to have you back. I am Joel, and I am joined by two of the goofiest guys that I know, Colin and Aaron. Hi, guys. How are you? <laughs> awesome. Really excited to be here. Good. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if goofy is the best descriptor of my personality. So goofy. You get a little goofy. Anytime anyone asks me about you and they're like, what is Colin like? I'm like, goofy. He's goofy. a goofy guy. A goofball. <laughs> you can be kind of a yeah. goofball. I can be kind Total of Total cheese. Yeah. I did use to sell cheese, if that helps with the goofiness. <laughs> Man, I miss- What a good segue. That, that was perfect. I will tell you, I miss those days so much. Carl's been waiting for like 20 episodes to be like- I need to remind people I sold cheese. I'm just waiting for that moment. When did I? When do I say it? Unlimited free samples of cheese. I mean, it's, it doesn't get much better. Not only that, Colin, but remember we lived in the same apartment building at this point. So I would walk down, not only right. the same apartment building, but same hall. You were, yep, you were floor, down yep. the down the aisle from me, and I, we would walk over and just open up your drawer of cheese. I always had some a drawer of cheese. Yeah, like, I had in his like drawer clothing drawer, like. In a refrigerator. Pants, shirts, in a refrigerator, keys. you weirdo. Oh, okay. Ooh, yeah. Okay, what, wow. what, what, it's just, it's, we're talking about regular cheese, Aaron. See? Goofy. Oh, we're talking about drawers. I don't usually think about things as drawers. All right. Well, see? Goofy. Goofy from the start. I was spot on today. Thank you very much. All right. Let's get, let's get right into this one. You mentioned uh, Aaron White Wine from France. Tell us a little bit more. Yeah, absolutely. Today, we are drinking a white wine from Chateau Rizan d'Espagne. It is Bordeaux Blanc, and it is 70% Savion Blanc and 30% Semillon from the region of Bordeaux. And this is 12.5% ABV. 
and we got this guy for about fourteen ninety nine. You know, I forget anything. No, I think uh, I think you nailed it. I think you nailed it, guys. I said to power through that French. I said to like, how'd I do? Like I 80, eighty five percent. No, you even you even put a nice little accent on semion. The, the yeah, semion, semion, semion hit very nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was nice. I wrote out the phonetics on the screen just because I away. wasn't gonna remember that. Okay. The listener doesn't know. I mean, I am fluent in French, and well, I just nailed that. Yeah, let's, I mean, the listener knows experience. that that's not true. <laughs> It's a, There's a middle somewhere ground. between the two of those things. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Aim for the middle ground. You'll land perfectly. I gotta tell you, you know how I like to usually wait till the last minute and order wine and have it delivered. That is your thing. Yeah, I did that mm-hmm. today, and I had I had just the the most pleasant, the most handsome delivery person. That oh yeah, I've ever, I'd love yeah. to hear more about him. Please tell me I'm more. Really Joel. glad that happened for you. Absolutely, it was my buddy Colin here. My buddy calls. Yeah. Called me yeah. up, yeah. <laughs> totally in in true Joel fashion. Was not prepared for this. Colin called me up, said, "Hey, you pick the wine. Had, How listen. were you not prepared for this episode? <laughs> this was your episode. I picked the wine, but I didn't pick it up. So Colin graciously, <laughs> the gentleman and scholar that he is, calls me and says, "Hey, I'm picking it up. He knew he had a feeling I that I wasn't going to be prepared. I picked knew. it up for me, brought it to me. Thank you, buddy. That was really sweet. Yeah, you're welcome. Listen." I figured I was there. I was cute. looking at the wine. I figured you weren't prepared, so uh, I just picked it up <laughs> in the nicest way possible. That's in the my best reputation. assuming nicest way. No, I yeah, no, it was you very, were totally unprepared. Listen, for today. I thought of you while I was shopping for wine, Joel. Well, that's so that's nice. where you are in my. That's romantic, my, even. I'll yeah. take that. I'll take that. All right. Well, you made it sound a lot nicer than it was. So thank you. Appreciate that. All right. Oh, and, and let me tell you. So the reason reason I I chose this wine, by the way. You know, I guess really we haven't done a, a white Bordeaux yet. We've hit Bordeaux a little bit, not not Bordeaux Blanc. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to do that. And that's really kind of the only reason. <laughs> so that's we enjoy. Reason. That's super fair. Yeah. I'm here for it. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know, at fourteen ninety nine, why not give it a shot? Right? Yeah. Figured figured either way we'll we'll be all right. Yeah, and we'll see. You know, something kind of you know, middle of kind of the range of prices, maybe actually even dare I say a little toward the lower end. In fact, can I can I name something that I was kind of like stewing on the other day oh, that I please. realized? Yeah. So so we've we've rocked through now at this point about nineteen different wines. This will be our twenty, 20 right plus here. a couple with our with our grocery store episode mm, twenty two. Sarah. Yep. With that being said, you know we've hit wines from as cheap as like nine ninety nine all the way up to I think our most expensive was like the Tensley at twenty nine ninety nine. The best wine at the lowest cost, which I think is something that we can name so far because we've had good wines all over the place. We've had good wines, you know, in the mid-20s, wherever. But the best wine that we've had so far at the lowest price point was the Igual Cote d'Aron, which runs about fifteen ninety nine. God, I forgot that So I just wanted that to like put so that cheap. in there as like a price point. And, and, and I remember that because I've literally picked that wine up three or four more times since that episode because I enjoyed it so much. I've brought it to Thanksgiving. I brought it to Friendsgiving. I got it the other day just to have at the house. Fifteen ninety nine, really good price point. So I'm curious to see this at fourteen ninety nine if we're in the same quality range. Unbelievable. I had totally yeah, forgotten that's that. That's cool. I congrats on twenty episodes. That's wow. pretty cool. We we made it to twenty. I mean that's, Big two zero, that's pretty neat. Huh? We stuck yeah. with it. That's good good for us. Little pat on the back. I've always said I'll give it till twenty one. And then, uh, you know what? If we haven't taken off yet, I'm out. So, Oh, no. <laughs> I hope this isn't your last episode, Joe. I will. Well, you know, I've always said 21, so we got at least one more. I'll Maybe I'll bump it up to, uh, <laughs> I'll give it till 25. Give it till 25. And if that's we're fair. not really, like, jiving by then, and, like, I'm not yeah, still not really sure, sure about you guys, I'm just going to see myself. All right, well, there you have it. We'll keep doing this thing, but uh, in the meantime, let's... Learn a little something, I think, through the method of trivia, Colin? This is the only thing you will learn. That's right. We are finishing up our trivia game this week. Aaron is currently in the lead with a score of five to four. Joel absolutely... To no surprise at all. Uh, uh To everyone's surprise. Uh I mean, let's... To everyone's surprise. Uh... Your hate fuels me. <laughs> uh, but Joel has Good. plenty. 
Joel has plenty of opportunity to catch up here. We got four questions today, each a point each, just so we have a total point availability that is equal to both of you. So today we are going to talk about the aging and a little bit about bottling. So over the first two trivia games, we covered grape picking and then wine making. So we have wine and now it's time to age it and bottle it. And that leads us right into our first question. What is the French wine term that is widely used in the wine industry for the time in between the end of fermentation and the beginning of bottling? Is it A, élevage, B, batonnage, C, cheval, or D, pégeage? And this first question goes to Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> Have these questions gotten harder? Uh, they've gotten Frencher, for sure. <laughs> I would just say uh, Elevage. Yeah, that's right. Elevage oh, is the term. Oh, man. Okay. And Boom! In French, it, it doesn't directly translate to English, but it means raising. So the French- Elevate. It kind of, yeah. To raise, to elevate. That's how I figured it out. I was really hoping you'd pick C because that's a French word for horse, and I thought that would be the funniest answer, but you get it right, so- um, yeah. Yes, but that would assume I knew the French word for horse, which I don't. <laughs> right, that's what I was banking on. Anyway, so I picked the word that was closest to an English word. And yeah, I'm not gonna no, lie, no, you know, I was kind of between élevage and cheval, just because I was like, I know that cheval is a word. I know it's a thing. I know I've heard it before, but I couldn't remember why. Yeah, yeah. So the French kind of view wine aging, uh, wine maturation as raising their wine. They have a very romantic view of the winemaking process. So when we're talking about the élevage process and maturation, we're really mostly talking about wine spending time in barrels, which leads us to our second question. Which of the following is not a type of wine barrel that a winemaker might use for aging or elevating their wine? Is it A, oh, man. oak barrels, B, stainless steel barrel, C, cement barrel, or D, copper barrel. And this one is for Joel. Excellent. I'm glad it is. There's no French in this, and I think I know the answer. Uh, the answer is D, copper barrel. That's right. It is D, copper yeah. barrel. Yep. Um, oak, uh -huh. oak is obviously the most common. You usually see some white wines and most red wines go into oak. Stainless steel, you oftentimes see lighter reds and mainly whites in stainless steel. Cement is actually pretty cool. It's becoming more of a popular option because it's, it's a porous material and it allows a lot of air into the wine as it ages, very similar to what an oak barrel would do, but it doesn't impart uh, any of the oak flavor. And then copper barrels just aren't something that is used. So <laughs> They're just not a thing. <laughs> I mean, technically you can make a barrel out of copper, but... You could make a barrel out of copper, but they don't use that for wine make it. As I mentioned, oak is the most popular material that's used for wine barrels and wine aging. So this question is about oak barrels. And I actually kind of gave away one of the answers, but which of the following is not a reason that winemakers use oak barrels to age their wine? Is it A, to allow for oxygen exposure, which is assist with maturation? Is it B, to increase the color intensity of the wine? Is it C, to provide tannins that give the wine structure? Or is it D, to impart certain flavors? It is A, to allow for oxygen exposure, which assists with maturation, which is a word I used earlier today. No, that's actually the incorrect. What? Wow. Yeah, the, which one is not a reason why Do I get a steal? You do get to steal. Yes, that's right. What? Okay. No way. Yep. Excellent. Uh, the correct answer Joel? would be B, to increase the color intensity of the wine. That is 100% correct. That is not oh, one of the oh, reasons oh, a oh. wine waker would use oak barrels. But oak does provide some tannin, and it does impart, based on the toastiness of the oak, certain flavors. Oh, shoot. I I <laughs> am a bad person, and I made the biggest mistake of test prep, and I missed the knot. Oh, well, I it's missed okay. The, I missed the knot. Yeah. That's not like no. you're a teacher or anything. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I am ashamed. I was so excited <laughs> by ah, Your I'm, loss is my gain, my You're friend. right. No, you are you are right. It is <laughs> entirely on me. I missed the knot. I was yeah. I oh oh my god. Oh boy. Yeah, this just got move. a little interesting. That's crazy. So now going in, going into the final question. 
It is all tied up. We're at. I can't believe uh, I'm going to lose this on a well, misinterpretation of the question. Don't play. Don't start playing these stupid head games. Oh, I'm going to lose. I can't believe this is going to happen. And listener at home, I know you're using only the edge of your seat, but you bought that thing. Use the whole thing. I can't believe that this. We so didn't script it. This we is not course, scripted. Of course, it's unscripted. We wouldn't script trivia. So mad. Be bushly. I'm so, like, uh, I was so excited to know the answer of why to use note barrel. Yeah, and he, he, uh, I mean, I missed the knot. You missed the knot. Listen, Ricky move. Ricky move. It is, and we can't go I'm back. Really nervous, it's like. God, my palms. That's awesome. okay. Keep going. Next sweaty. one. All right. I hope this next question is really, really hard. It's going to be like, what are the two colors of wine? Final question. It's tied six to six. <laughs> You're so proud of that, Jim. Joel has a chance to take it home right now. And this is about a little bit about bottling. At the end of the bottling process, sulfites are added to the wine. For what reason? Is it A, to preserve the color? Is it B, to prevent spoilage? Is it oh C, my God. To adjust the acidity, or is it What's the sulfide? to enhance the flavor? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Nobody knows. This is a great mystery. Nobody one. knows. This, this Nobody is, knows the answer to this question. <laughs> this is it. This is it. Game on the line. 6-6. Six, six. Does he come up with the right answer? This is so intense. Wow. This is so intense. There I'm, is I'm a I want to drink lot. this whole bottle of wine. We'll just wait. I'm on the line. I need an answer. Okay, I've got it. The reason that sulfites are added to wine before bottling is to prevent spoilage. That's correct, Joel, with the ah! win. Oh, I blew it. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. <laughs> Joel with the come from behind victory. Wow. wow. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Ooh. As it should have always been. Wow. I'm uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a little sweaty. So, <laughs> Just <laughs> before we celebrate, just a little more on that question. Sulfites can actually deplete the color, and they have no effect on the acidity or flavor of a wine. So they're purposely there to prevent spoilage. To review, big picture, you pick grapes in a variety of different ways. White wine is immediately pressed off the skin, and then fermentation is started, whereas red wine is go through a process of maceration to extract color and tannin and flavor. After that process, that is then fermented. At, at that point, you have wine. The wine is then sent through the process of élevage or put through the process of élevage. If it's a wine that the winemaker would like to age, some wines get bottled right away. And then after the process of élevage, the wine is bottled and ready to be shipped. And that is the winemaking process. So um, what what do I win? What what are my earnings? For you this? win a big old smooch the next time I see you. Oh, hey, that's nice. All right, <laughs> you win free Let's delivery of your lazy yeah, wine right. bottle pickup. <laughs> that's right, from Call it away. I'll pick you up the next wine. Well, well free done, delivery Joel. And a smooch. I'm into it. It's a great day. It's a great day for you. Well, there we go. We learned something. Joel comes out victorious the at champion. the end of the three-day trivia event, extravaganza, if you will. I'm feeling pretty good. The only thing that will make me feel better is enjoying some new wine. Let's get into it. Tastes like wine. All right, well, here we go. Uh, about to try... The Chateau Rosan d'Espagne Bordeaux Blanc. Go ahead and give it a swirl. All right, Aaron, what are you getting, buddy? Outside of the rage of me losing that trivia uh, because I m misinterpreted and messed up a uh, question, as an educator, I'm mad at myself forever. Yes. You know, I I'm getting a lot of this. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes. You, you lost, you lost, you lost. I'm getting a lot of the same kind of like apple peach you know that that kind of fruit-esque smells that you would get from a lot of Savion Blanc as this is a as we um named early on a 70 percent Savion Blanc wine a lot, a lot of those bad boys love it okay Colin definitely getting a lot more peach than usual and that might be the Savion poking its head through but you do get all of those pretty classic Savion Blanc flavors you get a little bit of that grapefruit slash passion fruit you get a little i get a little pear in there and then that's that's kind of it on the nose besides the peach this is a total peach bomb 
It's like surprisingly peachy for Sauvignon Blanc. I'm like shocked how peachy it is. Each bomb. To me, I, I love that. There you go. Uh, Writing it down ending. for our future yep. stickers. Get Each those bomb. Merch. But I'm going to tell you, I actually, uh, to me, it was a pear bomb. Especially at first when we first opened this thing up. I was like, oh my God, pear. A lot pear, of pear. pear, pear. A lot uh, of pear. But yeah, pear, peach. The only other thing I might say is just a little bit, a little bit, a little bit of that, um, you know, petroliness that we were kind of talking about last week. Just a little bit. Nothing like the last one. But just on the end there and a little bit. And I, was, I had to go back and, and look at the ABV on this, 12 and a half. You know, so it's not like a, not a high alcohol or anything like that. But little, yes. Yeah, talking I, about Taz little, balls? A little bit. Petro, Taz, a little Taz Bolly? I mean, and honestly, I'm going to say more, it's it's more like the oil, more like oil than tennis ball on this one, to be honest with you. And it's just very faint at the end, so. The only other thing I'm getting is a little bit of uh, citrus, like maybe some lemon, some lime in there too. But back seat, huh? Back seat to the, to the pear and. Yeah. Oh, totally. It's definitely pear peach. pear, pear and peach for sure. And then a little bit of that, that grapefruit. Okay. Awesome. All right. Well, let's go ahead and give it a taste. I'll go back to you, Aaron. Yeah. You know, definitely getting uh, a lot of the apple, a lot of the, the kind of peach flavor, um, very fruit forward. I, I'm actually, you know, I would love and maybe Colin, this is a question for you. You know, I, I look at a, I look at a wine that we're picking out and this is, you know, Bordeaux Blanc. And I see that it is like 70% Savion Blanc. If you were to pour this into a glass for me next to a glass of just like Savion Blanc, I, I is, is the difference here just the region and the slight blend with another regional grape is is that the only difference uh, that someone is looking for here? Because this this could just be a savvy B for me. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it could. It's a little bit peachier than your average Sauvignon Blanc. So I would say. But would your would your average wine drinker notice that? You with your level two trained brain and mouth and nose are picking the peach up. But would your would your average wine drinker? drink this and be like, this is any different than your Sauvignon Blanc? No, this is this is close enough to a Sauvignon Blanc to just call it a Sauvignon Blanc for sure. It's not that much different. I will say the main difference that I'm picking up other than the flavors on the palate is the mouthfeel. This has a very creamy mouthfeel almost, as opposed to a traditional Sauvignon Blanc is going to be a lot, a lot sharper. This is kind of round and it, it kind of just flows over the palate as opposed to like attacking the palate in, in spiky ways. So I think that's really nice, actually. Um, I, I like that quite a bit. But the, other than that, the flavors are pretty much, you know, you get some of that citrus, you get a ton of that pear, you get a ton of that peach, and, and that's pretty much all there is to it. It's not a terribly complex wine, that's that's for sure. And then one other thing I will say, the finish is, is not great. It, it doesn't taste bad or anything. Like, we've had some wines where the finish just gets kind of gross. Like this still has all those really nice fruity flavors, but it's super quick. Like you take a sip of this wine and all the flavors kind of gone right away. There's not a lot of last around flavor. Well, there you go. We talked a bit about what we're experiencing here. Let's talk about what we think. Yeah, but did they like it? It's time for the review. All right, I'm going to keep it consistent here. And uh, Aaron, I will start with you, sir. How are you feeling about this wine, and where are you going to rank it? Yeah, you know, I have been really excited for the past few episodes. Every time a new type of wine is introduced to me, I came in as a person who is like, you know, there, there's Savion Blanc, there's Pinot Grigio, there, there's Pinot Noir. And when I was introduced to, like, Rioja and Cote Rhone, that was really exciting to me because I, I didn't have that, right? And so when we talk about you know, Bordeaux Blanc, and we talk about like, oh, this, you know, something slightly different. I get excited about it. This ain't it. You know, th this is, to me, this just tastes like any Savion Blanc. And for fourteen ninety nine, quite honestly, like there's probably a better Savi B out there for that price point that we have not found yet. I know we've talked a lot about doing like a box wine episode, because I actually think there's like really quality box wine out there and Colin's making faces, which is why we have to have the episode. <laughs> Look, man, your wine snob. If, if, Hey, how about this? I'll say this. If this is what you want out of wine, there is a Sauvignon Blanc box wine out there for you. All right. 
Like if this is like a passable wine, the black box Savio Savio Blanc is just as good. So I would say solid closet wine, I guess. I wouldn't say throw it, you know, for fourteen ninety nine down the drain because I think it's equivalent to Savi Beads in the same price range. But, you know, if you want a ton of wine for the same price, go ahead and get a Boda Box Savi Blanc because it's the same thing. So to be clear, where are you placing this one? In the closet. In the closet. Fourteen ninety nine, it's not down the drain. Closet one. Back back up Savi B. People say what is what is Bordeaux Blanc? You say it's a Savi B. Okay. In this Call case. It. In this in this case. I'm glad there? you said in this case because that would be really unfair to Bordeaux <laughs> Blanc in general. Sure, because... sure, sure. Hundred percent. In this case. Yeah, I think the wine is decent. You know, I think for fourteen ninety nine, mm-hmm. it's it's not bad. It's really it's tasty. It again the, the finish isn't there, but I really like the mouthfeel. It, it's really nice. The it, I think it's structurally very well balanced. The flavors are really nice up front. You know, I, it's probably a backup wine, but it's right there in the front. You know, I, it's probably a closet wine, but Aaron seems like he has this one hidden behind a box wine. I would put <laughs> it close to the front of my closet because it's it's a, it's just an easy sipper. Like, there's nothing offensive about this wine at all. It's like Joel said down the middle earlier, this is about as down the middle of just a, an easy drinking white wine as it gets so you know i can't can't dock it for that so um i'm enjoying it but you know would i go out and seek this one out no probably not but am i am i mad to have this one as a backup absolutely not i'm drinking it and enjoying it so it is the front of my closet but i'm gonna say i'm gonna toss at you you said like aaron's hiding behind a box wine i think there are bad box wines and i think there are some decent box wines out there and i'm gonna throw the gauntlet out to have a box wine episode because I think that if we were to hold on to this bottle and put it next to uh, the Savvy B box wine of a couple of the better box wines, I think you'd be hard pressed to determine which is which or which one's better. Okay, well, I'll leave it to you to pick the boxed wine that we yeah. will enjoy. Let's let's prove do it. that point, let's, Aaron. Let's stop yeah. talking. Big about wine it and... is really excited about my my gallon. Yeah, talk. let's do it. Yeah, <laughs> no, and no, look, no. For a, look for a tetra pack. So we don't have to buy an entire box. Why wouldn't you want a whole box of wine in your fridge? Because um, you're a if snob. It's, if it's not good, what am I going to do with an entire box of wine? You're a snob. Well, you're going to spend all of eight dollars for this box. Yeah, of you wine. just drink no. it. It's 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 fifteen dollars for the equivalent of like four bottles of wine. I'm sorry, Joel. What do you think about your wine? Oh, thank you. Oh, uh, hello. Please Hi, don't I'm mention back. box of wine. Please don't mention <laughs> box of wine. <laughs> You know, I think we've had some good canned wines that are just so much. No, I'm joking. I'm not even going to say that. I'm not going to do the disservice to this lovely chateau. No, I'm I'm right there with you guys. I was I was almost going to say that this is the best wine that uh, we've had for under fifteen dollars. Then I remember what we were talking about earlier the the Igu Gall uh, Cote de Rhone being an essay in price point and just being phenomenal. But I do think diamonds in the rough at this price point are tough to come by. And I think that this this one may not be a diamond in the rough, but it's solid. It's solid. Fourteen ninety nine. It's a solid white Bordeaux. I am going to put this one right there uh, again at, at the front of the of the closet. I think I was sort of I was I was debating between putting it on the, the kitchen table Um you know, maybe maybe toward the back of the kitchen table, but I'm gonna put it firmly in the front of the closet. And I think just the reason is is again, it, it's it's not offensive, but it's also not making me think all that much or doing doing too much too crazy to to you know really stand out in one way or another. So I think we're all kind of saying the same thing here. It's you know, uh, and. Aaron, I'll, I'll let you disagree if you want to, but I think what we're saying is, you know, decent wine for the price point, not a waste of your wine at all. So go ahead if you're a big fan of white Bordeaux, um, you haven't tried this one, would recommend going ahead and, and giving it a go. See what you think. I don't think you'll be terribly disappointed. You may not write home about it, but you won't be disappointed. Yeah, no, I'm not I'm not disagreeing with that. I, I think like $14.99, like it's a, it, it is what it is. It's not, if this was a $20 wine or a $25 wine, that would be a problem. But, you know, it, it, it's fine. Uh, there it is. That's that's episode 20, 20th review, give or take. We did the the supermarket episode. But just been a, a, a lovely ride so far. So thank you so much for joining us again for episode 20. 
happy to have you. Come back next week. Uh, we'll have a whole another episode for you all. Let's see today. Who do I throw to for the for the socials? Colin, are you not doing it anymore? No, Aaron just thinks I was weird that one time, and I was like, Colin, you were weird that one time. Oh, that's right. I, I said slide into people our DMs. To put their fingers. Slide. No, you could say slide into our DMs. Oh yeah. yeah, there was the finger thing. All right, yeah, Colin, it's... we're gonna give it back to you. <laughs> Redemption for Colin. Go for it, buddy. Do it. Okay, you can find us on Instagram is where we do most of our work. Aaron's doing a great job over there. Uh, we are recently also on YouTube. We have all of our podcast episode up there. We also have some shorts up there. Plan to put more shorts up there and do a little bit more video content. So look for that. You can find us on Facebook. I'm trying to get the Facebook group going. So I'd love for some more people to interact with that. That would be great. And of course, you could always find us on our website, which is stopwastingyourwine.com. So thanks again for listening for the first 20 episodes. Uh, we, we love to hear from you guys, and uh, we look forward to at least another 20 or five if Joel quits. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> we got five more, five more. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks so much again for listening, and we'll see you next week. And as always, stop wasting your wine. Bye, Bye everyone.